Control is a sci-fi action game that's all about investigating knickknacks that violate natural law, shooting possessed security guards with a transforming gun, and, if performance testing is any indication, mercilessly battering your graphics card. Yes, Control is a demanding game indeed, although it does have a couple of good excuses. For one thing, it's rather pretty in general, with atmospheric lighting and detailed, often literally otherworldly scenery. For another, on NVIDIA RTX GPUs, it has the most complete implementation of ray tracing that we've seen from any game, along with DLSS and aliasing to help deal with the inevitable performance drop that DXR brings. With or without these features, you're looking at the RTX 2060 or Radeon RX 5700 just to maintain a solid 60fps on high settings at 1080p, while 1440p needs an RTX 2080 to maintain the same level of quality. At 4K, even the RTX 2080 Ti struggles, although things do get a lot easier once you swap the game's default MSAA for DLSS. To find out how Control runs across a large selection of different hardware, we've tested it on nearly 30 graphics cards, including multiple APIs, 10 CPUs, and 3 RTX Power laptops. Big thanks to MSI for providing us with our testing hardware. And without further ado, let's start by taking a look at Control's PC graphics settings. On all GPUs, Control gives you 11 individual settings plus 3 presets, low, medium, and high. Some video cards will default to DX11 mode, though you can manually run the DX12 executable. We did that for the AMD GPUs, but NVIDIA's non-RTX cards should probably just stick with DX11. The main draw of DX12 mode is that it allows RTX cards to enable ray tracing features. We'll get to that later in the video. Many of the individual settings won't affect performance much and can be safely left at max. Let's talk about the ones that matter though. Setting volumetric lighting to low can improve your FPS by 20%, and disabling global reflections yields up to an 18% improvement. The other two heavy settings are Screen Space Reflections and MSAA, where you can gain 15 and 12% respectively. You may not want to turn MSAA all the way down though, as that would definitely introduce jaggies. Let's get to the actual benchmarks, starting with graphics cards. All of these are using the latest AMD and NVIDIA drivers, with an overclocked Core i7-8700K processor to minimize bottlenecks. But before we get to the dedicated GPUs, let's quickly check performance with integrated graphics. AMD's Vega 11 graphics on a Ryzen 5 2400G, just respectively at 720p, plugging along at nearly 50fps. That's about triple the performance of Intel's HD Graphics 630, which fails to run controlled to playable level. Onto the GPU benchmark results, where we have some budget and mid-range current generation offerings. All four cars average more than 60fps, although the GTX 1650 only barely does so. AMD's RX 570 and 590 both deliver good performance at extremely aggressive pricing. There is some hope for beleaguered owners of low-end cards, at 1080p low, even the GTX 1050 can wrestle the playable 40fps. That means that pretty much everything from the past few generations, both Nvidia and AMD, can handle control at its lowest settings, while for 60fps you can make do with a GTX 1650, RX 570 or a faster GPU. It's a big step up to medium quality, unfortunately, and we're looking at mid-range and even somewhat high-end cards to comfortably clear 60fps. The RX 590 comes up just short of that mark, while the GTX 1660 squeaks past. But to keep minimums above 60, you'll need to look at GPUs like the RTX 2060 and RX 5700. For about the same price, AMD comes out ahead, but the 2060 does have some tricks available that we'll get to later. Overall, even for medium quality, the requirements are pretty steep. A GTX 1050 Ti just scrapes past 30fps, and 60fps demands at least a GTX 1660. Even the 8GB RX 580 falls just short with 56fps, so having more memory isn't going to be a major help at this stage. Maxing out visual fidelity without ray tracing proves too much for most GPUs. We're looking at frame rates for the RTX 2060 and 2070, along with AMD's new RX 5700 cards, and they all break 60fps, but not by much. Minimums can occasionally dip below that mark on the 2060, though overall these four GPUs handle the demands of control pretty well. Looking at the full chart tells a different story. At 1080p high, a lot of old cards simply fall apart. The once mighty GTX 1070 can't average 60fps, and neither can the GTX 1080. The two GPUs and controls recommended system requirements, the GTX 1060 and RX 580, are both down in the 30 to 40fps range. It's pretty nuts we're basically looking at graphics cards that cost $350 or more just to average 60fps at 1080p and high quality. It's no surprise that 1440p with a high preset makes life even more miserable for mid-range and low-end cards. Not even the RTX 2070 or Radeon 7 can average 60fps. Even the RTX 2080 just barely breaks that barrier, though minimums again dip below that mark. The best bet for 1440p high is arguably Nvidia's DLSS technology with an RTX card, which actually looks quite good in control, or just drop some of the settings like reflections and volumetric lighting. 
To get 60 FPS and stay there, only an RTX 2080 Ti will suffice. Ouch. Other mid-range cars like the RTX 2060 land in the 30 to 40 FPS range, while the GTX 1660 and below all fail to break 30 FPS. And trust me, you don't want to play Control at less than 30 FPS, as the game starts to feel very sluggish. Ideally, you really do want 60 FPS or more for Control's increasingly kinetic style of psychic warfare. Do we even need to talk about 4K performance? Yes, yes we do. The mighty RTX 2080 Ti plugs along to none too respectable 41 FPS. The RTX 2080 is the only other GPU to break 30 FPS. AMD's Radeon 7 and RX 5700 XT, meanwhile, both deliver performance in the 20 to 20 FPS range. Even if you run at minimum quality and double the performance of all the GPUs, that's still only two cars that will break 60 FPS. Clearly, Control isn't designed to be played at 4K with all the bells and whistles enabled. But wait, we have a few more settings we can still enable, namely ray tracing. Going back to the subject of ray tracing, Control is the first game that includes an expanded package of potential DXR features. There's improved diffuse lighting, softer and more realistic shadows, reflections and transparent reflections. So when you're looking into glass pane, you can see both through the window and real-time reflections of the world in front of it. Helpfully, you can choose to toggle any of the features individually, or select one of two DXR presets. Medium only enables reflections and transparent reflections, while the high setting adds ray trace diffuse lighting, contact shadows and debris effects. We'll stick with DXR medium, though with DLSS the high preset may be an option. Going back to 1080p medium, this time using the medium ray tracing setting that provides for reflections and transparent reflections, there's a massive drop in performance. The 2080 Ti still manages nearly 100 FPS, and the 2080 stays well above 60, but the 2070 is right on the threshold and the 2060 comes up a bit short. If that's not scary enough, look what happened to the GTX cars we tested with ray tracing. We couldn't get several 10 series cars to run, including the 1080 Ti, but the 1660 Ti is the best of the GTX cars we could benchmark with ray tracing enabled, and it sits at a cinematic 24 FPS. If you're thinking about trying ray tracing on a GTX series card, you'll probably need to target 720p. The 1080p high preset with medium ray tracing isn't all that different, the RTX cars are about 10% slower this time. The 2080 now dips below 60fps at times, and the 2070 and 2060 can't even average 60fps. But there is hope in the way of DLSS. We didn't test all the RTX cars at 1080p with DLSS enabled, but you can see how much it helps with 2060, which now manages to keep minimum fps above 60. Keep in mind that this is rendering at 720p and then upscaling, and the results aren't perfect, but in motion it still looks quite good. Also note that unlike the other DLSS enabled titles, you can do 1080p with DLSS even on the RTX 2080 Ti. Moving up to 1440p with ray tracing, DLSS is basically required, which we didn't use for these real time frame rates. The 2080 Ti barely averages 60fps, with frequent dips below 60, while every other RTX card falls well below that mark. Clearly, control with ray tracing needs a lot of GPU power. What's cool, or kind of anyway, is that 1440p with DLSS actually performs better than 1080p without DLSS. That's because the higher rendering resolution for DLSS at 1440p is 1700x960, fewer pixels than native 1080p. As such, most of the RTX cars manage 1440p high with medium ray tracing pretty well, provided DLSS is enabled. We also tested the high ray tracing preset, which further tanks performance. The 2080 Ti drops from 61 FPS to just 42 FPS when natively rendering 1440p. You can basically look at the controls ray tracing implementation as being forward looking. You'll need next year's hardware, or maybe the year after that, to run the game with maxed out settings. 4K ray tracing without DLSS is basically a non starter. The 2080 Ti barely manages 30 FPS, and the 2060 was too slow to even consider. Again, this is something future GPUs might be able to manage, but nothing today will do native 4K rendering with ray tracing and good frame rates. Flipping on DLSS at 4K uses a rendering resolution of 1440p before upscaling, and performance ends up being very close to the native 1440p level. It is slightly slower, the DLSS work is entirely free, not so much that you'd really notice. Still, even with DLSS, the 2080 Ti can only barely average 60fps, so maybe next year. It is great to see options for multiple types of ray tracing all implemented in a single game. Previous ray tracing games have often limited the use of our chase effects to only reflections, only shadow, or only global illumination. It's also nice that the feature is available at launch, so RTX GPU owners don't have to wait months for a patch. However, even those lucky enough to have an RTX 2080 Ti should be careful about turning all the ray tracing features on, as there are yet another heavy drain on what is already a very demanding game. 
Don't even bother with enabling ray tracing on quote unquote compatible GTX cards. You'd be lucky to play for more than a few minutes for the weight of the DXR cause of the crash. Using DLSS instead of MSAA can massively improve performance, mostly overcoming the loss incurred by enabling the DXR. I'd suggest using DLSS whenever possible if you turn on ray tracing, and perhaps even if you're not enabling ray tracing. It's basically free FPS and doesn't look that much different than MSAA. In motion, you really can't tell the difference. Something else to point out is the control isn't the most stable of games. To be fair, much while testing was with a pre-release version, but even with the full release, crashes can occur. That's especially true at more demanding settings. Tuning for close to 60 FPS tends to make the game more stable, and of course not constantly changing settings for testing purposes helps as well. At least the game autosaves regularly, so you're not likely to lose more than a few minutes of progress. Overall, control is heavily dependent on GPU power, but the upside of this is that your choice of CPU is far less impactful. Paired with an RTX 2080 Ti, a 1080p low, a Core i9-9900K or i7-8700K are barely faster than a mid-range Core i5-8400. AMD's Ryzen chips are a bit slower, but that's only at minimum quality. The 1080p high with ray tracing set to medium quality is effectively a tie among nearly any reasonable CPU, and that's with a 2080 Ti. Any lesser RTX card and the CPU would possibly be marginalised even more. From the slowest to the fastest CPU we tested, with the fastest graphics card possible, short of a Titan RTX, the CPU is mostly a non-factor. The Core i3-8100 generally performs about as fast as an older Core i7-4770K, and every modern CPU we tested should be able to hit 60fps or more, provided your GPU is up to the task. What about laptops? All of our laptops are now using dual channel memory, though it doesn't appear to matter that much with control. At 1080p medium, all three laptops were able to average more than 60fps. The 2070 Max-Q and the regular 2060 continue to offer very similar performance, while the GE75 with its 2080 is obviously much more powerful. With ray tracing enabled, only the GE75 and mobile RTX 2080 can stay above 60fps. DLSS is an option of course, and with DLSS enabled, the mobile 2060 and 2070 should also play 60. Unfortunately, regardless of the GPU, at least for these MSI laptops, control is nowhere near the native 120Hz or 144Hz refresh rates of the displays. The GE75 can get there at 1080p low, but with minimum still falling below 100fps. But as a single player experience, 60fps is certainly sufficient for now. For anyone with an AMD or GTX GPU, control's first for graphics power is brutal. 1080p high is about as far as most of these cars can go, or 1440p medium. It's not the control runs inconsistently or is outright impossible to play on low-end hardware, but the barriers to entry even at 1080p can be steep if you want to use the higher quality settings. At the same time, control's implementation of ray tracing is worth a nod, mainly just for its ambition and completeness. This definitely sets the standard for DXR sporting games going forward, and the reflections and lighting in some of the areas are particularly nice. Perhaps not half the frame rate nice, but there's a clear jump in image fidelity for many areas. Hopefully we don't see many more games that only use ray tracing for the odd reflection. All games that ship without DXR support at launch and they're added months later. Looking at you, young blood in Tomb Raider. If it is DLSS, also does an excellent job of making up for the performance hit. Is it better than AMD's radiant image sharpening or contrast adaptive sharpening? That's a topic for another day, but DLSS in control looks as good as we've seen it so far. Thanks again to MSI for sending us our control testing hardware, and as always, like and subscribe for more gamer performance analysis videos. Thanks for watching.